Hi everybody, this is Britt Simon. So uh, we've got to do the next video. Um, this video is going to be a projection video, a case analysis and SEAC data analysis plus uh, predictions or projections uh, for the Europe region. Okay, so we've already done Africa and Asia um, and now we have to do Europe. Um, now Europe is a little bit different uh, to the other two regions. Um, and in some ways, it is, it's going to have a slightly easier time of it, in a sense. Um, but, uh, you know, but like all proje projections, it's complex to get uh, a projection correct for, um, for Europe. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and there are some unknown factors as well. We, we don't know how the embassies are going to behave. Um, uh, there are going to be some non-performing or slow-performing em uh, embassies. There are some country problems and political issues such as Ukraine uh, and Russia. Um, there, are, uh, there are some parts of Europe which have a very sort of poor um, population um, <clears throat> and therefore there could be financial difficulties in, in uh, attending interviews. Um, and at the other end of the scale, funnily enough, there are some very comfortable countries in Europe where people will play the lottery um, and win the lottery and then say, nah, I'm good here. I'm, I like Germany. I like France. Uh, I'm comfortable in Spain. Once they actually you know, get into um, the winning position, they then decide not to proceed with the uh, with the process at, at one point or another. Either they don't fill in the DS two sixty or they don't uh, attend their um, uh, their interview and so on. Right. So it's a different cultural uh, and you know um, a different cultural situation than let's say Asia or Africa. Um, uh, you, you know, there's 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 differences. Let's just leave it at that. <clears throat> Okay, um, so I am going to do some projections here. Now, I want to say again, I want to reiterate, just as I have in the other two videos, projections and predictions um, are, by their very nature, um, uh, inaccurate, right? Um, so I'm going to do the best I can to give you some common sense data and some perspectives on that. Um, but at the end of the day, you're entirely free to ignore what I'm saying here. You can believe whatever you want to believe. Um, and, you know, if you want to believe in, in EU going current and that's all you want to hear from me, then go ahead and just assume that EU is going to go current. Um, uh, I don't think that. But if you want to believe that, that's up to you. Um, so... Uh, but for those of you that, uh, you know, want a little bit more information and you're happy to have the good and the bad news, um, then, you know, I'm, I'm sure we can have uh, an adult discussion about what the realities are and that should be okay. Okay. All right. So that being said, let's get into the data. Okay. First of all, let's have a look at um, some high level data, which is about uh, all of the the regions and the comparison of how many selectees there are in DV 2024 compared to uh, DV 2023. So um, there are 25% more selectees for Europe region uh, than there were in DV 2023, right? So DV 2023 had just over 40,000, as you can see, and there are just over 50,000 in this year. Now, not all of uh, EU went current um, in DV 2023. So 40,000 was too many. And so therefore it doesn't take a genius to work out that 50,000 is far too many, right? Um, there are too many selectees uh, for, the, for, the, um, for the region to go current. So again, if you're, if, if you're thinking, the region's going to be current. I, you know, I want to believe in fairies and everything else. That's already bad news for you because common sense will tell you with 10,000 extra selectees and no extra visas to give to those uh, selectees, there's not going to be a good outcome for many thousands more people, right? So, um, so that should be obvious already. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about some other data points. 
the case density in DV 2023 for Europe was 51.95%. Um, uh, and the case density is uh, is lower, actually. Um, let me, sorry, let me click on not the projection. It's lower. It's only 34%. So there are more holes in the data. So in, in other words, the cutoff in uh, DV 2023 was 32,000. So more holes means that the equivalent number to that is a higher number. So you could, on face value, say, well, so then the number should be more than 32,000. The final cutoff should be more than 32,000. Well, let's consider that and see if that's a sort of a reasonable theory here. Um, and, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at that. Um, <clears throat> the highest case number in Europe in DV 2024, we now know is just under 67,000, right? Okay, so now let's have a look at another sheet here, which is my projection sheet and make sure it's big enough for you to see. Whoops. Yeah, there. Okay, so in DV 2023, in order to issue the 21,750 visas that were issued, they, they scheduled 11,654 cases, right? That allows for the fact that there are derivatives on each case an average of you know a couple of uh, derivatives in each case. Actually, we've got the derivative rate for EU is 2.23 in DV 2024. So every single case has an average of 2.23 people attached to that case, right? Um, so 11,604 were scheduled last year. However, there's a couple of factors. EU exceeded the quota that they are set um, by about a thousand uh, visas, and those additional visas came from Africa. It's because Africa underperformed, and therefore EU was able to enjoy a little bit of a benefit of taking some of those visas in the same way that uh, Asia uh, did the same. Right. So, um, so in a sense, we should be subtracting from the number of cases scheduled. Um, in order to sort of normalize the, the data, we should be making a, a, an allowance there. There was also, of the 11,654 cases, there were canceled interviews. The program stopped on September the 6th uh, in uh, last year uh, for DV 2023. Um, in 2023, September 6th, 2023, the program was stopped. And there were interviews already lined up in, uh, in September, which were then canceled. So of the 11,654 cases scheduled, some never got their chance. In other words, you can say they were too many anyway, even though uh, they were able to over-issue, there were still cases cancelled, right? So um, that's another factor that should actually subtract for that number. So realistically, 11,654 cases is what I would think is a high uh estimate of how many cases it would um, it would need being scheduled in order to fill the quota for uh, for EU and perhaps even go just a little bit above the quota okay now in order to get 11654 cases we have to take into account the non-response rate the these uh, this is people that don't even fill in the ds260 they're selected but they decide to not even fill in the DS-260. That, to me, is called a non-response. It's different to a no-show. A no-show is someone who filled in the DS-260, gets scheduled for an interview, and then doesn't show up for the interview. Okay, um, The no-shows we can see in the data because we know they've been scheduled and they remain in ready status. Um, but the, uh, the non-responses, we can't see in the data. We have to assume a factor. And I've increased this factor for EU because I feel that there is more of a chance of people in EU deciding not to, not to proceed um, because they're more comfortable, uh, let's say, financially and, and life, and they're generally not at risk, apart from, uh, obviously, uh, people in Ukraine. Um, and some of the other um, countries where there are political issues. Um, so, 
Um, <clears throat> So, so I increased that number by 15% to say, okay, as a minimum uh, number, we need about 13,400 uh, cases um, in order to schedule 11,654 or so. Um, uh, and we can then figure out what the case number is that corresponds to 13,402. And that number is, um, the case number for that is, 30,609, uh, sorry, 30,629. Okay, so do I think that the uh, that the 30,629 is, is the, uh, the cutoff point? No, I don't. Um, there's more to it in, in, uh, in Europe, um, and we have to take into account some other factors. The other factors that we have to consider is the uh, performance, particularly in Turkey, of Ankara Embassy, um, for whatever reason, for the last couple of years, they have been behaving oddly and they've left a lot of people in Ankara, Ankara uh, local um, applicants, they've left, left those people without an opportunity for an interview. And so they are, they've been a badly performing embassy and they've been a bit up and down. Um, but in general, I would say that they have been a badly performing embassy. There's been amazing Twitter campaigns, there's been um, uh, political moves in the background, there's been lawyers contacting them, etc. There's been all sorts of pressure put on the embassy, but still they've refused to budge. And they've scheduled what they wanted to schedule, right? So that's, that's a threat to quite a number of people. In fact, if I just check how many selectees we're talking about, um, that is, uh, where are we? Turkey, 3,684. So just for Turkish uh, applicants, um, that's, a, you know, that's a pretty decent number of people that are impacted. And if we look in, um, let's have a look at, uh, I'm just, I should pull these across and show you what I'm looking at here. Um, but if I show you the data um, that I'm looking at, whoops. Yeah, this is the, um, this is the DV 2024 select E numbers, right? But if I go to um, Zarthesius's site and we look at Twitter, uh, we look at issuances, let's have a look at issuances. We'll do that for Turkey and just see how that um, behaved last year. Um, so region was EU and we'll look at Turkey. So they got 1,408 um, cases through, and their select E count was 3,383. So the 3,383 was impacted a little bit by the early cutoff, but still they only got 1,400 people through. So that's an indication that, um, that there is a bit of an impact there, okay? That's one impact that we need to consider. Um, the other impacts, of course, is the complication for Russians and Ukrainians um, in attending their interviews. Now, Walsall are doing an amazing job, I have to say, and Frankfurt also, um, particularly Warsaw, in uh, in handling the overspill of people that can't interview uh, in either Moscow or Kiev. Um, and so, you know, there's a good effort being made, but still there's going to be an impact to... Uh, to those cases. And if we look at uh, those two countries, um, let's see, I've pulled that up, pulled that out now. Yeah, if we look at those two countries, where are you? Oh, where am I? There. Um, here we go. Oh, this is 20. Okay, so I want to do 20. Did I just close it? Oh, dear. Visa bulletin, and we'll do this one. Sorry, I think I closed it for some unknown reason, being dopey. Um, okay, so so here we go. So in for DV twenty twenty four, 
Uzbekistan has got 5,500. That's important to know for uh, for a few minutes' time. And uh, Russia has got 5,500. Ukraine is fairly low at 4,200 uh, and 86. It's, that's gone down a little bit uh, from normal. Uh, Ukraine last year, actually, Ukraine was 3,800 last year, and Russia was 5,500 again. Um, so these people, the Russians and the Ukrainians, which accounts for, what, 10,000 selectees, they're going to have a bit of a tough time this year. So, so far, we've got um, Russians, Ukrainians, Turkish, uh, all of whom are going to be sort of challenged. And then you've got a very large population in Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan tends to um, have a fairly low um, uh, approval rate. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. Um, it could be to do with the economics of the program. Could be education. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> but they seem to have a fairly low approval rate. And so that's another massive chunk of selectees that could be impacted neg negatively, right? So as we look at the other selectees in the other countries, are there any other countries that sort of stand out? Well, Armenia is another one um, which tends to suffer with slightly bad performance from the embassy. Um, and, you know, th there could be a risk there. Kyrgyzstan, we have to think about just because it's um, such a large number of selectees and Kazakhstan. So there are countries with large numbers of selectees that will be impacted, right? And what that means is, to our estimates, is that I don't believe um, that 30,629 would be the case number that we would see. So I, I almost want to reverse the, uh, the script, if you like. I want to flip-flop a little bit for a minute and say, okay, let's look at DV 2023. How many cases uh, had to go current in order to, to yield 11,654 cases? Because if the problem is embassy performance or um, people being, uh, you know, not able to proceed on their cases, then we would see that by, you know, a, a fairly big gap between the number of people scheduled and the number of people who are current. So, as we look at case number 32,000, which is what uh, went current in EU, there was um, Russia was also at 32,000, and there was a cutoff in place for Uzbekistan, which probably knocked out a few of the Uzbekistan cases. Um, but nevertheless, there were 16,900 or so, around about that number, um, of cases that actually were current right? It'll be a little bit less than that because of Uzbekistan. But basically, 16,900 cases were current, and only 11,654 were scheduled. So there's quite a big disparity between those two. So I wanted to say, okay, if I apply 16,900 to DV 2024 numbers, what case number does that give me that's the equivalent of 32,000? And the uh, equivalent number is 42,065. That's the same number as that. Now, to me, that sounds quite high, right, um, in terms of a, uh, a range that we could have, something between 30,629 and, um, and 42,000. Now, if we see slightly better behavior from the embassies, um, and, you know, there's more normalized behavior for some of the, the, the things that I've mentioned. Um, we could get a little bit of a, um, a, a bump, and, the, the, and the, the number would probably end up in between my low point and my high point, somewhere in between there, right? So what I then did was I said, okay, add 1,500 cases. There's, there's a fair amount of difference here. It's about 3,500. But let's add 1,500 cases to the 13,400 number. What case number does that give us? And that's a, probably a fairly good projection. Um, and that number is 30, 35,546. So, which is kind of nicely in the middle of that range. So, my projection, and I actually, I can't believe I got to here so quickly. I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I'm like, am I talking fast? Um, so I'm only 19 minutes in. My Asia one was over 40 minutes. Um, so anyway, my projection then is that the the cutoff for Europe 
will be somewhere in the range of 31,000 to 42,000, um, somewhere in that range. But actually, if I was really pressed on it, I would be looking more in the range of about 35,000 to 37,000, something in that range. It is going to vary a little bit. I'm assuming that there's going to be slightly better behavior from the embassies. So I'm assuming that. I'm factoring that in. But if the behavior of the embassy is, was worse than I expected, then the number will go lower, uh, go higher. Sorry. Um, if the number is better than I expected, then the number will go lower. Right. So um, embassy behavior tends to work in reverse. Good behavior tends to lower the case numbers. Bad embassy behavior tends to increase the case numbers, right? That's how that works, because bad embassy behavior ruins the chances of uh, selectees and opens the doors for other people. That's that's why there's a, uh, a positive effect for other people if some embassies misbehave. And just like embassy behavior, political concerns and... Um, and the ability of people to travel, for example, 4,200 people traveling outside of Ukraine. Is that possible? Is that sensible when, uh, you know, there's uh, all that unrest, shall we say, let's just be polite, um, with Ukrainians fighting for their lives? Um, uh, you know, can they leave to go for a DV interview? It seems unlikely, right? Um, Russians obviously have an easier time to travel, but they uh, have difficulties in getting the Schengen visas. So um, they, uh, and that, that may be easier nowadays, but they also have some difficulties in traveling to embassies like Warsaw in order to have their, um, their interviews, okay? So I've given you kind of a projection and there will be many of you that are saying, okay, but uh, you're projecting a number that is 30,000 numbers, you know, more than 30,000 numbers, less than uh, the highest case number. And that's obviously going to be extremely upsetting for many of you. And many of you, just because you're upset, will disagree with my uh, logic, right? And that's a very human, very normal emotion. I totally understand how some of you will uh, be doing that. Um, I've had some of that today, uh, you know, based on um, the projections I've given so far. Um, I have, you know, people who prefer to believe in God or prefer to believe that I'm a fool or whatever, um, and uh, and they don't believe my projections, and that's fine. I don't really mind that. Um, it's a, like I say, it's a very understandable human emotion. I have been a DV selectee, um, as I mentioned, I think in the Asia uh, video. I was a uh, derivative, actually, not a selectee, but I was a derivative of my wife's case, um, and we had a fairly high case number in a very over-selected year. We had 140,000 selectees. It was the uh, the second highest uh, number of selectees that I've ever known, um, the o second only to DV 2024, right? So it was bad, and in those days, uh, there was good em embassy behavior everywhere. There was no sort of political concerns. And so it was just obvious from the very beginning that a lot of people would miss out in that year. Um, and I had a relatively ca high case number. So I know what it's like to be, um, to be worried and concerned and to feel like you're going to miss out. I was told uh, my case number was too high by the then uh, expert back in 2013. Um, so, uh, you know, so it didn't work out that way, obviously. We did get through in the end. Um, but uh, but I am aware of what it's like. So I just wanted to sort of, you know, let you know I understand totally how impactful what I'm saying is to a lot of you. Um, but this is the nature of the game that you're playing, right? There's been a 25% increase in the number of selectees, and there's no justification for that. Right, um, the number of selectees in DV 2023 was already too many. Okay, and uh, in general, embassies are behaving better today than they were, let's say, this time last year. In general, okay, um, there's still difficulties, of course, but in general, things are a little bit better this year than they were last year. Okay, 
So for all of those factors, there is obviously going to be a number of people, a lot of people that will miss out. And um, and yes, if you've got case numbers in Europe of, uh, you know, above 40,000, you're very much at risk. Um, if you're above 50,000 and above 60,000, then you're very, very at risk. Risk, by the way, is kind of like a bell curve. Um, if I took my minimum number in my range, 31,000, I'd be shocked, frankly, if we had a cutoff at 31,000. Um, it's not impossible to have a cutoff at that point, as I've proven just mathematically. It's not impossible, but I would be shocked if it was that low. I would also be shocked if it was uh, 42,000. That, that would also be a shock to me, right? Um, the most likely scenario is that it's in the middle of that range. So it's a bell curve is what we're looking at. The chances of um, accuracy of the number are higher in the middle of that range, in my 35 to 37K range, um, than the two extreme ends, right? And the chances of it going um, to 42,000 or even above or being 31,000 or even below, the chances are not zero um, for that. There are, There is a small chance of those numbers being exceeded in one direction or the other, but it's only a small chance, right? So I'm trying to give you sort of adequate warning. And again, as I explained on the Asia vi video, the reason I give all this information is not to depress you, it's not to cause you pain, it's not um, to argue with you or anything like that. It's to inform you so that you can mentally adjust your thinking to understanding there is risk in this process. And if you've got a high case number, there is much more risk for you than, uh, than for other people. Um, and so you can come to terms with that. Instead of getting to the end of, you know, mid-July when all of the case numbers have been scheduled or, and, and, or getting to the end of the year and you're feeling like the door has been slammed in your face and you don't understand why. I would rather give you the information now to explain why, um, you know, why that might happen, okay? So, um, so I'm hoping that all makes sense. Um, I'm gonna call the call a day on the, on the embassy uh, videos. I need to go shave, I need to take some rest, um, uh, but, in the next couple of days, I'm going to do the Oceana and South America videos. So no need to ask me, am I doing that? I'm doing that. I've said I was going to do a video for each of the regions. The only region I won't do a video for is North America because it's just too small. Um, but apart from that, I'm going to do a video on each of the regions. So I'm trying as best as I can to get the videos produced and, and get the information out there. Okay, so I'd be interested in your thoughts on, on the projections. Um, by all means, do uh, ask me questions either on the YouTube video um, or go to my blog at britsimonsays.com and ask me questions there. Um, and please do make sure you give me a thumbs up, uh, like on this video. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and turn the no notification bell on, please. Do all of that for me. Um, I don't ask for much, but I do ask for that, okay? All right, everybody. Thanks, and have a good night. Bye-bye.